Hey guys, welcome back. Well, it just goes to show you, in astrophotography, we can't have nice things. You know, nice things like clear skies and no problems to interrupt our imaging sessions. Last night I was out doing some imaging with the GT81, trying to uh, wrap up some data on three different targets, and all of a sudden I noticed that the uh, t CCD temperature had been increasing. I finally realized, though not initially, that it was the fan unit on the back of the ASI 1600. So I want to sh share with you a couple of my findings and uh, give you a little warning about things going forward just in case you encounter this problem. This is the set of files being generated in the imaging session by uh, Nina, and you can see here is this, uh, an aside. The number of stars is put in here and the uh, image high half flex radius is put in here. I'm on target M31 and I'm taking the blue and I have the uh, CCD temperature set at minus 10. This is what the files always look like and I don't pay that much attention to them. But you'll notice that as we go down from the first image here to the second to the third, there's a little dip and we went down to 9.5 and then of course the controller kicks in and uh, brings the temperature back up to uh, the or back down to the minus 10 degrees but then here at about 850 I started at 830 so this is actually only 20 minutes in uh, to the imaging session I've you start to see the temperature rise a little bit minus 9.5 9.5 9, 8 7 6 5 minus 5.5 and so on until finally I notice what's going on I start to investigate what the problem is of course my first assumption was that it was the cooling system on the ASI 1600 that was perhaps not doing uh, properly. But here's a graph from the current draw. This is, comes out of the Pegasus Astro Ultimate Power Box, and it's one of the graphs that it produces. Again, I find these things kind of useful when some anomaly happens, I can go back and take a look at what's going on. So from the time that I turned on the, the Ultimate Power Box here, I start almost immediately by bringing up the various, connecting the various pieces of equipment, the focuser, the filter wheel, the camera, uh, the mount. Uh, somewhere in here, I would have started the cooling system for the, for the ASI 1600 for the sensor, and I imagine that's what the primary slope here is coming up this way. And then right here, I would not have slewed to the target and begun the imaging session unless the temperature were at the minus 10 that I commanded to. So this little jump in the current here must be the slew to M31. And then once it gets there, of course, it does an autofocus. And then it starts its imaging process. And things seem to be going fairly well. And then you can see there's an increasing current draw going on after about 8.20 p.m. local time. And this span from here to here is about 30 minutes. So uh, this is about 10 minutes in and we're about at 8.30, and so that's about the time you can see here when we're getting this, what seems to be going on at this phase is the fan, though I didn't know this at the time, stopped working, so as I'm imaging, I'm generating a ton of heat, but the fan's not able to dissipate it, and then the cooling system has to ramp up power in order to keep the temperature at the minus 10, and so it notices something's wrong here, brings the temperature back up, and it does as well as it can, uh, for uh, about uh, 30 minutes, about 12, about 20 minutes, and then it's it's maxed out at 100% cooling power on the the power to the uh, to the cooling system. As the imaging session continues, it generates heat. The heat is transferred into the chip, and the chip comes uh, up to uh, minus 3.5. So it raised about you know six and a half degrees. I don't know how bad this would have gotten if I had not been awake to catch this problem going on. So at some point in here, like I say, toward the end here, about an hour into the imaging session or so, hour and a half into the imaging session, I finally, it finally dawns on me that something's going on and I see the temperatures. And so I shut the system off, shut, disconnected the camera and then brought the camera back online. At this time I was thinking I still had a problem with the cooling system. So restarted the cooling system and it came right back up to it's 100% power and then I noticed I wasn't getting any better so I just shut things down and that ended the the session last night. Now here's what the screen looked like when I was in the uh, messing around with the parameters after the restart reconnected and you can see the cooling power here is at uh, zero then I'm telling it to come I'm commanding it to uh, move it move the uh, temperature down to minus 10 of course it can't um, so the the cooling power 
increases up to 100% of power, then either a, a, uh, a current limiter on the, in the ultimate power box or in the camera itself says enough's enough. And shortly after this, it shut the power down anyway. But you can see this, this, uh, the CCD temperature kind of just goes asymptotic at about minus 5 degrees or so. So that's as good as it could do. It can't keep up with the heat being generated by the imaging. I went outside about that time with that laser temperature thermometer that I have and measured the temperature of the case of the camera to be around 120 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or about 49 degrees C. So the, the outer body of the camera was actually quite hot without the ability to dissipate that heat generated during the imaging process. And uh, it was after that that I shut thing, came in and shut things down for good. After feeling the body of the camera that, and seeing then that the fan was not turning when I was outside, that clearly I had a fan problem and not so much a, a cooling system problem. So this morning I opened up the back of the camera to see what's going on. Let's take a look. All right, so you can see I've got DC power to it. This is obviously I'm inside and the uh, AC-DC converter is going to the wall. So I've got the DC power to the camera. I don't have the USB 3 cable plugged in yet. I'm going to do that. The fan should turn on. And let's get a... The fan is not turning at this point. So now what I need to do is disconnect DC power, uh, the various connections to the back. We've got several screws to work with here. We have these Phillips head screws here, which uh, apparently connect the fan to the back of the back plate here. And then we have these three screws here, here, and here that attach the back plate to the camera body. So what we're going to do now is disconnect the three connections we have uh, currently plugged into the camera and take off the back, the three screws that connect the back panel to the camera. And that should reveal a fan unit with a cable going back to some circuit board and some connector. And we'll have to be careful not to overstretch that connector. Then we'll disconnect that connector and hopefully clean out the, maybe check the leads going to the fan to see if there's any uh, obvious problem with power getting to the fan. If there's no problem with power getting to the fan, we need to inspect the fan to see it could just be broken. So that's our next step. Let's take off the unplug everything and take off the back panel. Here's what we have. It's fairly simple inside. Uh, we have a short wire going up to a connector on the board there. You can see the next step will be to unplug that connector and then we can uh, handle the this back panel here with the fan unit separate from the camera body. And we can also take that opportunity to clean the connectors just in case. Let's go to the next step. So I've separated the fan unit from the back of the ASI 1600. The fan turns quite easily just by blowing across it, so there's nothing actually physically blocking it from turning. The connector is clean. I think we just may have a simple matter that the fan has broken. This is the one of the, the four thread, one of the four screws that go into the back here to hold it on. So it's just it'd be a very easy matter to replace the fan, assuming that uh, that that's the problem. Well, I've reattached everything and plugged it in again, and the fan is working now. So I don't know, maybe just reseating the connector, uh, dislodged whatever it is that might have been interfering with the electrical connection. It's uh, it's hard to say, but certainly the fan unit is working. I don't know how reliable it will be, but we'll give it a shot again tonight and see what happens. So as you can see, everything seems to be working right now. But let's take a look back and see what the takeaways are from this little uh, experience. Hopefully, it's just a a brief blip in the life of an astrophotographer and not a setback that'll take uh, weeks if not months to to fix. The uh, ASI 1600 fan stopped working uh, fairly shortly into the imaging session last night although there was no obvious feedback and the only indication was a very subtle rise in the temperature of the CCD. It's subtle because you you see the number that's always minus 10 and you never look at it uh, but here that that was the only indication that something was was amiss last night. The imaging session control software, APT, NINA, SG, and I don't know about SGP, I don't use SGP, but it, my impression is they need to do a better job of monitoring uh, the session for anomalies and then warn the user and then if some, uh, maybe some uh, user-defined time limit goes by, then put the scope, put the mount into safe mode. And whether safe mode is stop tracking, so just freeze the mount where it is or uh, park the mount 
uh, in, in at the home position, whatever the it seems like a, a, a choice a user could make, just so you don't run into a problem of a amount going past the limits and and impacting or causing the camera to impact a tripod. Opened up the back of the ASI 1600. The fan is rated as a 12 volt DC 0.8 watt fan. It's about the same size as a uh, a typical small computer fan. The fan turned easily when just you just blow across it and it turns quite easily so there was nothing blocking it. The electrical connectors looked clean. It didn't seem to be any problem. Um, in fact there were no obvious problems. Now after reattaching it electrically and mechanically putting the back back onto the ASS 1600 I plugged in the uh, camera with the DC connector and USB cable which triggers the power to be sent to the fan and the fan starts working and sure enough the fan is powered and is working again. Uh, so I assume everything is, is back to normal and maybe it's just a matter of reseating that connector that uh, reestablished a, uh, an electrical connection. It wasn't obvious there was anything wrong, but it is working. I will say though that I'll try imaging a session tonight, but I'm going to keep a very close watch on the CCD, CCD temperature. Okay guys, well, I just thought I'd give you this little warning of what I ran into last night. It doesn't seem to be a major mechanical setback, uh, but it could have been if I let the imaging session run on all night generating heat. So clear skies and uh, keep an eye on that CCD temperature. Talk to you later.